Lord and say, I'm healthy and I won't see you until next year. I come home and I want to celebrate. But if he gives me bad news, I want to come home and duck my head in the sand, call everybody and see how much sympathy I can get and then worry myself crazy to where I can't sleep because we're not designed for trouble and bad news. But because of the fall of Adam, he has put us in a place that the only thing that will help us the most is trouble that we go through. Y'all ain't gonna hear me. Listen, children, if it hadn't been for what you've gone through in your divorce, if it had not been what you've gone through with your hard-headed children, if it had not been what you went through with misunderstanding in your marriage, you would not be the Christian you are today. It is not the sunshine that makes us. It's the rain and the storm storm that we go through. Woo! I feel like preaching in here, but it's too early right now. Listen to me now. You got to understand that if it had not been for the pregnancy that was unwanted or unplanned, it would not, some people would still be high and mighty if pregnancy hadn't embarrassed you enough to bring you to God and say, Lord, help me. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but everything bad in your life wasn't bad because all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord who are called according to his purpose. Listen to me now and I got to move, but I, I want to, you to see then that all of these things, and Paul points it out so beautifully in his writings in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12 when he is caught up into the third heaven. You know, they threw rocks at this man and stoned him, thought they had killed him, but they didn't kill him. He said, I don't know whether it was 14 years ago, whether I was dead or alive. He said, all I know, I was caught up to the third heaven. The third heaven is where God is. Hallelujah, there's a heaven one and a heaven two, but heaven three is where God is. And Paul said, when I got there, he said, I saw things that were unlawful for me to utter. And he said, at least I be exalted above measures. God calls a thorn to be placed in my flesh. He defined a thorn as the messenger of Satan. And the messenger of Satan, Paul said, buffeted me so until I prayed unto God. God three times, would have prayed four, but he answered me on the third time. And he told me, I will not move this thorn, but my grace is sufficient for you because the thorn that is in your side is to keep you saved. Some of you right now would not be saved if it wasn't for the hell that you've gone through in your life. I'll talk to you for a minute. So look at this thing. I, I want you to see it then. So preacher, what are you telling me? I am telling you to count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. But preacher, this is uncomfortable. It is, un, uh, it is not something that I can embrace. Uh, uh, why don't you give me a vacation in Hawaii? Or why don't you fly me, uh, praise God, somewhere beautiful and uh, let me get my strength and all that anyway your strength come from your strength comes from trials and you would you wouldn't be there if you wasn't in the state that you are in you got to understand just because you're saved does not mean you are perfect you are still evolving into what God's idea for you to be you ain't there yet you might think you there but you ain't there yet and let me show you why you ain't there because if you was there you wouldn't get as mad as easy as you get mad if you was there you wouldn't entertain thoughts you've been entertaining if you was really there you wouldn't be y'all ain't gonna hear me you would do what God tell you to do and not drag your feet you do it but you do it when you get ready to do it instead of when God told you to do it I'm about done. Look, look at this now. And so I need trouble. 
Tell somebody, I need trouble in my life to keep me balanced. If I had just sunshine, oh yeah. You know, when, praise God, you take people who have to walk to church. You say, you walk to church? Yes, I love church, honey. I got to get there because I got to get my, I got to hear my preacher. I got to hear the choir. I got to hear the singing. I just need to be in the company of the saints. I got to be there. And so they walk and drag the little kids and the little kids come in and, and then we got to walk back home. And as soon as God bless them with a car and a job. Y'all ain't gonna hear me. Air condition. Heat in the winter. Air in the summer. Soon as they get that as soon, as soon as the young lady who don't have a husband come to church, she come in faithful because she want God to do something for her. And as soon as she gets the husband, now she wants to take a vacation. Soon as we get the car, then we want to take. Soon as the bills are caught up, then we want to take a vacation. Oh, I ain't talking to no money in here. I'm telling you, if it had not been for the trouble you've gone through and you've seen, I know it didn't taste good. It didn't feel good. It didn't look good. It wasn't something you recommended. It wasn't something you chose. Hallelujah. But I guarantee you at the end of the day, it makes you what God wants wants you to be hallelujah hallelujah listen to me now I know a lot of folk don't agree with this because you got faith preachers that teach if you're really saved and believe in God you won't get cancer Job did and God took the witness stand and said he was upright and perfect. How did he get cancer and he upright and perfect? And here you are with your sneaky Pete self. Praise God. Thank you. Can I preach in here? Some folks don't even teach you reality. It is real. I don't get me off course here. Listen, children, you got to understand that God knows what he's doing and he won't put no more on you than you can bear. He'll put more on you than you want to bear, but he won't put no more on you than you can. And so when we look at this here, we will find that Paul said it in 2 Corinthians 12. He said, now when God told me that his grace was sufficient, he says, now before, before I thought as a child, before I acted as a child, before I understood as a child, he said, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. So when God began to chastise me and began to answer me, I became a man. And in becoming a man, I realized that a new car shouldn't be the only thing that make me shout. More money shouldn't make me shout. What should make you shout, Paul? He said, now I glory in tribulation. Woo! I know, I know, I know we're in the 21st century and folk don't want, really want to hear that. They don't want to hear suffering. They don't hear about suffering. But do you not know your entrance to earth came through suffering? Your mama went through contractions. Your mama had, y'all ain't going to hear me. Some of y'all who had a mama, now you a mama and you know what mama went through. The baby didn't come here. I'm talking about the joy of your life. Didn't come here on a flower bed of years. You had to bleed. You had to pain. You had to go through. Y'all ain't gonna hear me. And so therefore, why would the human life begin with pain and then pain be expelled from their life? You have to understand what God is trying to tell us. You need to go through what I'm putting you through. You need to understand that whatever I put on you is only going to push you to me. Uh, Glory be to God. Let me move now. So then the joy, I need strength to go through my trouble. I need strength to go through my trial. Because without my trouble and my trial, I'll self-destruct. I don't need a devil. I don't need a demon, praise God, to destroy me. Without trouble, I will self-destruct. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Get a full stomach and try to pray and you'll go to sleep in the prayer. 
Uh, can I preach to anybody in here? Maybe I'm the only one. But, but this is what I'm trying to tell you is God has to keep you on your toes. Too many folk are flat-footed. God needs you on your toes. Ah, uh, can I talk to anybody in here? He needs you on your toes. He don't need you flat Footed. If you're flat footed, praise God, you're not going to be as good as you are on your toes. On your toes means you're aware of what you're up against and you're not going to let anything sneak up on you and you're suspicious of the devil and you're listening for God and hallelujah, you're ready, hallelujah, for whatever God is assigning you to do. I wish I had a witness in here. Notice now, children, and I got to move. So we need trouble in our life. We need our trying of our faith. We need this in order, praise God, to make it from strength to strong. Uh, notice this here. And what I want to tell you is, uh, praise God, notice the scripture reads in Nehemiah, it it says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. I need you to read it like it is. Praise God, given. Uh -huh. Listen to me now. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Strength. Let me divide it like this. The joy belongs to God. The strength comes to you. Let me say that again. The joy belongs to God. The strength comes to you. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. His joy is your strength. What it is saying is when you make God happy, you will get strength. Mm. The reason why we got anemic Christians is because we're in pursuit of our own joy. We don't care about making God smile. We don't care about pleasing God. It's what God can do to me and for me. But the joy that belongs to him will give you strength. When a man's ways please the Lord, he'll make even his enemies to be at peace. We're going about it the wrong way. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. Listen to me now. What God is trying to tell us, you need trouble, but you need to be able to get through trouble. What's going to get you through trouble is strength, but your strength is going to come by making me happy, not you happy, because my joy is your strength. Are y'all getting it? Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Are you getting it? And so right now, what we have to understand is, uh, praise God, whenever we make God unhappy, God pulls away from us and say, okay, you want to walk on your own? Well, walk on your own and see how far you will get. I know you're looking at me crazy, but I came prepared. Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, and these blessings shall overtake you when you obey what I'm telling you to do. If you obey me, you make me happy. If you disobey me, you make me mad. And the wrath of God is against the children of disobedience. You as parents, when your child disobeys you to your face, y'all ain't hearing me. You want to snatch them up. You don't want to buy them a bike, get them ice cream. You want to put a belt on their butt because they've angered you. Whenever we don't walk like God wants us to walk, we anger him. But when we walk like he wants us to walk, we put a smile on his face. And when you bring him joy, he brings you Oh God, listen to me now, and I gotta close. But what I want you to see is David was bringing the ark back. 
He was bringing it back to Jerusalem and the Bible says uh, that it was, as they were going over the threshing floor that the oxen that was carrying the ark, you couldn't touch the ark. You couldn't touch it. It represented God. It had uh, in it, it was a coffin and within it, it had uh, Aaron's rod that budded. It had the Ten Commandments and it had the bread that was there. Uh, it, this was the contents of this ark of the covenant they could not touch it with their hands they had golden rings on it and they had to run poles through the four rings in order to carry it to pick it up they had to put the pole through it and pick it up and put it on the cart or carried it into a building they could not touch it but as they were coming across the threshing floor the bible said and the oxen stumble the oxen are preachers Hallelujah. The oxen are preachers that carry the word. Preachers stumble, but the word never The word will never fall. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. And so the Bible said a man by the name of Uzzah took his hand to stabilize the ark and God struck him down right there on the spot. David looked at Uzzah and said, this is a good man. Why would God do this? And David got mad at God and would not carry the ark. Obed Edom said, I'll take it. I'll take it. So take it then because I'm mad at God. Have you ever been mad at God when you pray to him and know you're being doing, done wrong? and God don't answer you matter of fact he don't say a word to you he just go silent and quiet as though he don't even exist have you ever gotten mad at God because he's allowed you to be in a place so long until you think it's too long and you start getting an attitude toward God David said I'm not bringing it back Obed Edom said I'll take it and Obed Edom took the ark of the covenant which is the presence of God back to his house put it in his house and for 90 days his house was blessed and they came back and and told David said the house of Obed-Edom is blessed because the presence of the Lord is in there. David said we got to go get it because I can't live without the blessings of the Lord. I will never make it. So they went back and got it uh, and brought it back to Jerusalem. Listen here, children, I'm running out of time. Uh, but even in our text here today, Brother Nehemiah and him is trying to build back uh, the walls of Jerusalem. Uh, Jerusalem is the place of worship. It is a place where God's name was placed. It was in a place of an assignment where that the Jews would call home and it would be the capital of worship. And notice now the, the enemy had come in and besieged Judah, praise God, and burned the walls and took slaves and made slaves of the residents there uh, went there broke down the walls and uh, out of this company a man by the name of Nehemiah praise God where the favor of God was upon him uh, and Nehemiah was in the king's court bringing the king his wine uh, and uh, he would come before the king but one day he some of the fellow Jerusalemites uh, came and and uh, he asked them, how is Jerusalem? They told him, Nehemiah, the walls are burned and uh, it's broken down. Oh, it's in a bad state. And so this touched Nehemiah's soul. He went before the king sad. And the king says, why is your countenance fallen? He said, how can I be uplifted when the place of worship is in ruin? Huh? My place, my place of worship, my God's house uh, is in ruin. He, he said, oh, king, what, what do you want me to do, Nehemiah? He said, I want you to give me a letter so that I can go and rebuild. Huh? Ain't nothing wrong with rebuilding. Huh? Y'all ain't gonna hear me here. Some things get destroyed because we take our eyes off the prize. Many times, you know when you fail and I fail is because we got so comfortable until we forgot about God. Huh? And anytime you forget about God, the enemy is going to come in and he's going to wreak havoc upon you uh, and so Nehemiah said Lord uh, uh, King let us go back and build uh, and so they went back and they built all of the gates uh, and they built the city up 
But when they came uh, after they had completed the work, uh, you know the story of Sanballat and Tobiah, how they opposed them, trying to stop the work, but they were willing to work and would not come off the wall. But notice when they got finished with the work, they met out in the street and the scribe Ezra, Nehemiah, they all came to the street and all of the people there, they built a pulpit so that the speaker would be higher than the audience. And as they began to teach from the noonday, from the morning to the noonday, the Bible said the people begin to weep. They begin to weep because they saw their errors. They saw, they saw where they had messed up. Because if we'd have been living like we're supposed to live, the devil could have never penetrated. Hallelujah, our place. But because we got relaxed, and because we listened to folk we didn't have no business listening to this is the result but God is merciful and God is gracious and so the Lord allowed us to rebuild and when they built it back and they heard the word being taught the Bible said they began to weep and they began to mourn in repentance but the scribe Ezra told him time out I know what was done was wrong and I know y'all feel bad about it but today is not the day to ruin God's progress what you need to do is praise him for what he has done for when you praise him you give him joy and he will give you strength for the joy of the Lord is your strength tell somebody the joy of the Lord is my strength it is so much joy until he told me he blesses a cheerful giver can I preach in him your attitude has a lot to do with whether God is pleased even with your offering and your gift I don't know who I'm preaching to today but I came by to let somebody know to tell everybody that when you seek the pleasure of God you will get strength strength means ability strength means power do you hear what I'm saying God told me to tell you you need strength to combat the hell in your marriage you need strength to combat the hell that's trying to take over your children you need the strength of God to hallelujah to fight off insanity in your mind but how you gonna get it is not trying to get the source just for you what you got to do is you got to start praising God and putting a smile on his face and the Bible said and Solomon prayed a prayer and said Lord give me wisdom the Lord said unto Solomon because you didn't ask for the lives of your enemies and because you didn't ask me to make you wealthy y'all ain't gonna hear me the prayer please the Lord anytime you can make God happy strength is going to come to you strength is ability strength is sanity strength will cause you to triumph over every adversary do I have a witness here I'm glad 
yet to know uh, that it's within my strength uh, that I find happiness. Uh, it is in my strength uh, that I find contentment. Uh, it is in my strength. Uh, Y'all ain't gonna hear me, uh, but let me tell you uh, where I got my strength from. Uh, I didn't get it from Walmart. Uh, I didn't get it from Kmart. Uh, I didn't get it from McDonald's. Uh, I didn't get it from Zales. Uh, I didn't get it from Jerry's. Uh, I didn't get it from K's. Uh, I didn't get it from them. Uh, I didn't get it uh, from the Van Lowe's. Uh, I didn't get it from Crest Cadillac. Uh, I didn't get it from Tesla. Uh, I didn't get it from Mercedes. Uh, the joy uh, of the Lord uh, is my strength. Uh, whatever makes him happy, uh, I got to run on here, y'all. Uh, I know you won't be behind. I know you want a man in your life. I know you want a woman in your life. I know you want more money. But if you want that, make him happy. I promise you, he'll give you power to get wealth. I promise you, he'll keep them in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on him. Yes, I'm so glad that I found this discovery. I'm glad if I make God happy, I gotta run on now. But our example tell us these words, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Father, if you want me to go through Calvary, Father, if you want me to endure affliction, Father, if you want me to be lied on, whatever makes you happy, I just need strength. Shout hallelujah. Tell somebody I'm going to make him smile. If I got to give up everything, I'm going to make God happy. I'm going to put him before me. I'm going to treat him like he's the only thing in my life. I'm going to put him before my children. I'm going to put him before my husband. I'm going to put him before my wife. I'm going to put him before my job. I'm going to put him before my health. I'm going to tell him, do you slay me? That when I trust you, shout yes, somebody. Talk to him, preacher. Talk to him, preacher. Talk to him, preacher. Tell him what I said. Tell him what I said. Tell him what I said in Amos. Y'all living in good houses. And the Lord dwelling on a tent. He ain't happy with that. Tell him what I'm telling him, preacher. Tell him what I'm telling him. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Hallelujah. God's not happy. When he's the last thing, tell him, preacher, how many years have Christmas rolled around and everybody got a gift but me and it's my birthday? Tell him, preacher, tell him on Easter I died and rose again and a rabbit is published more than I am. Easter eggs is more important than I am. A Easter, the devil is a liar. I'm going to make God happy. Not one choir member ought to ever get mad because you can't sing your song. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be.
Look at somebody and tell them, tell them, excuse me, I don't mean no harm. I don't mean to disrespect you, and I'm not. But it ain't about you. It ain't about you. You should be so in tune to God until you shouldn't even make no plans. You should say, if it's the Lord's will. Hallelujah. The joy. We done heard that so long. Let me change it. The happiness of God. The delight of God. The pleasure of God is your strength. Listen, you ain't got to do this, but I just feel right now that the whole church needs to just repent and tell God I'm sorry for being so selfish and so self-centered. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. I know I put my kids above you. I'm sorry. I know I put my spouse above I know I put myself above you. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tell somebody if daddy is happy, we're going to eat better. If daddy is better, if he's happy, things go better for us when he's happy. But when he's displeased, glory be to God. Stand all over this place. If it were drummers, I would use my cymbal. And if I were writing, I would use a pencil. I would use my hand. Oh, if I were a party. No matter who or what we are, we must pray. And if I were an eagle, I would use my wings. Yes, Lord. But since I am a believer, I'll use everything I will use my voice If I were a singer Ooh, No matter who What we are We must pray Everybody help me say pray. Ooh, pray. Jesus. Bless you, Savior. Let me hear you, Zion. Oh, oh yeah. Everybody say yes. Pray. Rising of the sun. 
I'm going to leave you alone, but I need to tell your neighbor one more time. Say, neighbor, God told me that I can't make him smile. Woo! Can't speak to nobody else. But I know when I praise him for what he brought me out of. I put a smile on his face. Because I declare his holiness. Holiness means it's set apart. Nobody else can do me like Jesus. Nobody else can kill me like the Lord. Nobody else can save me. I'm the, I'm the, the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes, Lord. Father, I thank you. I thank you. Right now that I can have whatever I want if I please you. Yes. You will do for me. You will change your mind like you did with Hezekiah if I tell you what you want to hear. Hmm. Lord, if I please you by acknowledging you in all your ways, in all my ways, you will direct my path. If I please you, hallelujah, nothing is too hard for you. Do yourself, Abba Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Today marks a new beginning in my life to where the pastor that the Lord gave me has given me a revelation that I didn't have. That if I seek first the kingdom, if I please the Lord, he will not withhold no good things from me. A man's ways please the Lord he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him father I got it 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 I'm fixing to mess up hell right now I'm gonna go home and do my part if my spouse don't do theirs I'm gonna do my part and God will work for me going to make him smile for his joy is my strength Lord I bless you right now I pray over this congregation I ask you Lord to lift up every bow down head help us to understand that in your presence is fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Help us to understand that you inhabit our praise. You live in it. Our praise becomes a house for you to dwell in. And when you come in, healing comes in. Deliverance comes in. Victory comes in. Father, I thank you right now for knowing that we shouldn't have our heads down, but we should lift our heads up. Because that makes you smile. Your joy is my strength. And I thank you, and I praise you, and I bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Clap those hands that you've got. Praise in this place. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. We're getting close to normal. We're getting close to normal. And overcoming this virus
sometimes you got to take what you can get. It's a blessing for us to assemble ourselves together. We ain't got to have it all, but give us the crumbs. If we can just get some crumbs, we'll be all right. I want to say to you, don't, don't get discouraged. Amen. Don't get discouraged. Because if you got, if you have a, a fit with me being out of church one Sunday, how would you like for me to be out a whole month or a year with the virus? See, sometimes we don't use wisdom in what we do. God is in the same place I am. Hallelujah. I can only make an altar call he can save. Get mad at him if he ain't active. He knows what he's doing. Sometimes, our culture have taught us so incorrectly until we deem man above God. Amen. The greatest faith that a person can have is when they don't have to be anointed or given a prayer handkerchief. The centurions that just speak the word. Faith come by hearing and hearing of the word. Not a prayer cloth. Not, and I'm not knocking prayer cloth because sometimes people need that. They need a little applesauce to put the medicine in. They need a little jello. Mm -hmm. But when you get big enough and strong enough to just say the word, just speak the word only, and my servant will be made whole. Jesus said, I have not seen so great a faith, no, not in all Israel. place called grown up. It don't mean you're compromising. It means you're growing. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of God. Used to be where you had to do this with a phone. And then get to the last number and mess up and have to hang it up and do it all over again. Now you got to do it just say, call first lady. Send this text. Tell them I'm going to be a little late and it types it out for you. Amen? But if it was left up to some people, they would still be writing letters and still be using a, a typewriter. Never think that these innovations belong to the world. God created everything. Everything belongs to him. And for you <laughs> to hold back on wanting to be involved in a system that is better than you've ever seen. You're the one going to be behind. Amen telling you. So children, pray. Amen. I want to see my choir back. Amen. And we don't want to do anything that would cause even the carnal mind to say, what kind of leadership is that? Because sometimes we need to let folks touch and feel who don't believe like those who have never seen believe. It's not about you just making it. It's about it. He died for the whole world. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Listen, I'm going to ask our brothers to come to receive our tithes and offerings on today. You that are listening to us by social media, I want you to sow a seed of significance today. Be a blessing. Do not just watch this service and not participate. Amen. Amen. If you can't be here to usher, if you can't be here to do whatever, support us financially. You can send monies, amen, to help the ministry. Listen, we're raffling off a 2015 Chrysler 200, amen, and uh, uh, we have tickets. If you have not gotten one, amen, please do so. This is a fundraiser for our church, but it's, it could also be a blessing. If you buy four tickets, that's only $100, and amen, you could... You could get a $12,000 car for $100. I would take that deal any day. Amen. But uh, if I don't win it, I still supported the house of the Lord. So I'm saying to you, we have these tickets. You want to see uh, Miss Katrina uh, Harold uh, uh, 
Trina Harrell, and also I think the First Lady has some tickets, and uh, whoever else got some. But anyway, please request to uh, get a ticket. You could be the one cheesing. You could be the one cheesing, riding down there leaning. Amen. Praise God. And I said, I got my car back from Title Max. Yeah, but you could have had a Rolls Royce for what you paid for. <laughs> and they talk, talking about 400% interest. They want you to lose it. Amen. So I'm just saying. Amen. I want you to prepare yourself for tithes and offers. Our card machine will be to my right, your left, right over here. If you're giving electronically, amen. I want you to be a blessing to the house of the Lord. Let us sow. Listen, I need everybody from Abundant Life, those that are watching, everybody. Listen, I need everybody to continue to give. Uh, we're going to have a business meeting to let you know uh, our, our current situation with the church. Uh, and the payoff of the church and, and what's going on. We want everything to be transparent. We have all of our receipts. We got all of our deposits. Amen. We got what we've done and uh, there is nothing hidden and will be hidden. Uh, we don't have enough money to take a chance on hiding anything. Amen. We need y'all to help us and we don't need you to be suspicious of us. Amen. So, so therefore, I, I need your help. Those that are getting income taxes, Give the church $1,500. I'm asking $1,500. You're getting an income tax. Give the church $1,500. Amen. Be a blessing. There are those who have given $3,000 right here in this church. There are those who have given $1,500 right here without an income tax. They have given this money. And, and I need you to also be a support uh, as well. We're looking at $300,000 uh, plus right now uh, with our church. And so, therefore, with those who gave the 3,000, we still don't have 300,000. Amen? So, I'm saying to you, help us. This is our church. This is where our kids recognize home. Many were born in this church. Many came here to this church. They have served several years in this church. This is our home. God has blessed us with this place. And I'm saying to you, do not hide behind somebody else's skirt tail or coat tail. Let's do our part. This is our place. This is what God has blessed us with. And God always loved participation. You move the stone, I'll raise Lazarus. You pick up your bed and I'll call you to walk. You got to participate in what God is doing. And don't let everybody else do it. So I'm saying to you, please, please let us give. Amen. You get an income tax, give, give. Amen. Give. I could have used my money. Everybody else could have used theirs. Let's not be selfish. Let's not be self-centered. I'm asking you today, if you want to give more than that, you can. But I'm saying to you, let's do this. Amen. Praise God. We want to ask everyone to stand. Elder Jerome is coming. He's going to lift our offering. Amen. Would y'all please thank God for Councilman Worthy. Amen. He will be making uh, a presentation here at the church pretty soon. And uh, uh, also we got some other things in the works. But I'm saying to you, please, let us be a blessing to the house of the Lord. Amen. Elder Spears. Amen. Come on, let's give our bishop a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Y'all enjoy that word this morning? Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have your tithes and offer prepared, amen. We're going to ask the urchins to lead my right side out. Come down the window, amen, on my left side. Amen. Come down this window. Hallelujah. We're going to ask everybody to wait for the dismissal. Middle bucket is for 
Do you feel like you've been strengthened? Hallelujah. Do you feel like you've been strengthened? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. Hallelujah. I stand strong this morning. I think I got my strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I stand this morning in obedience of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I questioned this morning, but the word came forth and the Holy, and the Holy Spirit spoke and said, yeah, it's time to do it. So I got some help. I got some backup. But I am in obedience because my husband stands with me. He's just not up here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are some scriptures in the Bible that guide us to what we're doing this morning. And I'm only going to share a few. I'm not up here to preach or anything like that. But I just want you to know that there are scripture backing what we have to say this morning. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treaded out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. Hallelujah, do you believe that? Hallelujah. Over the past couple of years, I decided to do a practice of blessing my pastor, our pastor, but it's just personal right now for me. Because I know that there's many Sundays he leave and he doesn't get paid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, I thank you. The bills of the church have to be paid. And it's our responsibility to give, our, give of our tithes and our offering. But that's a later sermon. Hallelujah. Those tithes and offerings will help pay the bills of the church. It's not Bishop Jones' responsibility to leave during the week and then get a phone call about a bill needing to be paid and he has to come out of his pocket to pay it. It's our responsibility to take care of the house. Hallelujah. It's also our responsibility to take care of our priest. Hallelujah. Do you love your pastor? Hallelujah. 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 There's another scripture that says, and the first of all the first fruits of all things and every oblation of all of every sort of your oblation shall be the priest ye shall also give unto the priest the first of your dough that he may cause the blessings to rest upon thine house the reason I took upon the task that I took was because my house needed to be blessed in the sermon he talked about that trouble the past couple of years have been trouble in my house, hallelujah. But I stand today to tell you that I know my pastor has been praying, hallelujah. I know he's been calling my name and my husband's name out in prayer, hallelujah. And I can stand today to say things have turned around. The storm has passed over, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I thank you, Jesus. On Tuesday, we'll be celebrating 15 years of marriage. Hallelujah, God, I thank you. It has been a trying time. Hallelujah. I just gave that nugget to encourage you. The trouble may come, but it won't last. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. So to finish the purpose I have up here, because I'm still happy in the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to stand if you love your pastor. I want you to stand and just bring an offering. Bishop, if you don't mind, come standing over here in the front. I don't want you to hold the line up, but I want you to give a generous offering. I have my envelope. I'm not going to tell you what's in it, but it's a good offering. Hallelujah. It's a blessing for my pastor because we don't know if he'll get anything when he leaves here today. So it's our responsibility to bless him. So if you just walk around and come and put it in his hands, don't hold the line up trying to have a conversation, but just touch him. Feel that power of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. And love on your pastor. Give unto your pastor, hallelujah. This is not to pay bills, but this is for your pastor, hallelujah. This is not to take care of the church, hallelujah. Let him know you love him. Let him know you love him. God said he'll open up windows and pour out blessings you won't have room to receive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
is on the way. I believe God for testimonies this week because you blessed your leader. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, I thank you. because of that. dismissed.